Last year was an absolute interest rate roller coaster. The Fed came out hell bent on lowering inflation and they hiked rates seven times in 2022. In March, they started by raising rates 25 basis points and the market just kind of shrugged. In the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, we had started January with an average sales price of 402,000 and it continued racing forward right through the March rate hike. By May, it had peaked at 490,000. Home values had literally gone up 18% in six months. Well, in May, the Fed met again and raised rates by another 50 basis points. The average sales price in Dallas responded by dropping a whole $573. <laughs> Just six weeks later, in mid-June, the Fed met again, and this time they hiked rates by 75 basis points. Well, now the Dallas market starts to feel the pain. Home values dropped by 5.5% in one month. Towards the end of July, the Fed met again and raised rates by another 75 basis points. The Dallas market dropped at that point by less than 1%, right? Because August is a time when families who committed to move, they have to get it done regardless before their kiddos start school. Eight weeks later in September, the Fed raised rates 75 basis points, then more of the same in November. And finally in December, they finished the year by raising another 50 basis points. While in the midst of all these rate hikes, by December, Dallas home sales had dropped another 7%. So if you're keeping track right between January and May, home values had spiked an unbelievable 18%. Then between like May to December, they dropped almost 13%. Well, unfortunately, housing is the ancillary sideshow for the Fed, right? What they're really concerned about is inflation, which is much broader than just housing, right? So real question for the Fed is how did inflation respond to the rate hikes? Well, the consumer price index peaked in June and then it began to slide downward. The CPI dropped from 9.1% in June to 6.5% in December. And I think the nation kind of breathed a sigh of relief. And in November and December, mortgage rates actually began to drop. We went from a high of over 7% in November, and then by the end of the year, some home buyers were scoring rates in the high fives. I think, again, I think there was just this collective sigh of relief that we had tamed the inflation beast, and maybe the Fed would finally leave the market alone, right? Things are kind of looking up, right? But then we get this month's job report. Next thing you know, the Fed saying they're not at all done, and mortgage rates start heading back up again. Now, I can just picture you over there scratching your head wondering what in the world a jobs report has to do with interest rates. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Real quickly, we're gonna touch on why a job report would even impact interest rates at all. Then we're gonna take a look at what was in this job report. And is it even that accurate or relevant? And spoiler alert for you there, they're messing with the numbers big time. And thirdly, where are interest rates headed from here? Oh, and stick around to the end because we're gonna take it local, okay? We're gonna see what the experts are saying about the Dallas job market for one, and then we're gonna take a look at the Dallas housing market in real time. How are things looking so far in 2023? Well, you know the Fed is over here fighting the good fight, and they wanna see that it's working, that inflation is actually coming down. And two ways they evaluate and predict inflation is through jobs data, as well as measurements like the consumer price index. So if CPI is dropping and even going negative, that means that they're successfully taming inflation and everybody celebrates. Similarly, the Fed wants to see people losing jobs. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but what they're really after is seeing businesses contract instead of expand. And if the businesses contract, people are gonna lose their jobs, right? So as weird and as odd as this sounds, what the Fed and even the market too, what they wanna see is they wanna see people losing jobs. So if you wanna know when interest rates are going to come down, you know, like when for you, right, it matters is when you're gonna be able to buy a house, when you're gonna be able to refinance, right? Well, these reports are gonna tell you that because the Fed accepts them as an indication of whether or not inflation is coming down. So what did jobs do in this most recent report that has everyone up in arms and interest rates going haywire? Well, the expectation for last week's job data was to see 185,000 new jobs, but that's not what happened. Okay, now keep in mind, unemployment is measured in two ways, right? The business survey and the household survey. Well, the business survey revealed 517,000 
new jobs. And the household side came in at a whopping 894,000 jobs. So this, you know, immediately caused the unemployment rate to drop from 3.5 to 3.4%, the lowest number since 1969. Now I realize the natural response here would be like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. But that's again, not what the Fed or the market wants to see. Lucia Mudukani puts it this way. She reports that U.S. job growth accelerated sharply in January, pointing to a stubbornly tight labor market and a headache for Federal Reserve officials. So what the Fed really wants to see is people losing those jobs because it's gonna show companies contracting, right? So instead, they see all these new numbers, these new jobs, right? And they conclude inflation is still out of control. And of course, if they haven't tamed inflation, they have to raise the benchmark rate again, okay? And that's where that is just bad news for everybody. Now, the puzzling thing about this report is how many layoffs we know have been happening. But I wanted to dig a little deeper into this because I think we're gonna find that this report isn't as bad or as good, or I guess really as bad as it might seem. Now, there are three things here that are causing me to be a little wary. First of all, remember those 894,000 new jobs from the household survey? Well, 606,000 of those jobs were part time, okay? So barely enough for households to make ends meet. And part-time jobs are a sign of a tightening jobs market. Seda owner explains it this way. She says, at the start of a downturn, Firms would rather reduce work hours before they let workers go. Now, secondly, and this is a pretty big deal, okay? The Bureau of Labor Services made changes to how they measure results. Lucia Mudakati explains that with January's report, the Labor Department published its annual payrolls benchmark revision. Okay, she goes on to explain that they updated the formulas it uses to smooth the data for seasonal fluctuations in the survey. She further explains that household employment jumped 894,000. Remember we talked about that number, but accounting for the new population estimates, the increase was only 84,000. Okay, when it boils all down to, is this report is just not an apples to apples comparison to what we've been seeing. The BLS is making all kinds of adjustments to it, which makes me personally a little less confident in the results. But what do you think, right? Are the results, do you think the results are more or less accurate after all these revisions. I would love to hear your opinion. Definitely comment below. Thirdly, unemployment is a lagging indicator. Seda owner explains a lagging indicator this way. She says unemployment starts rising only when the downturn is prolonged, okay? Because unemployment follows a growth with a delay, it's considered a lagging indicator. In other words, the Fed raising interest rates may very well be slowing an economy down, but you won't see it in jobs data until much further down the road. Now you will see it in CPI data. You know, CPI data is a leading indicator and it has in fact been going down, but we'll have to be like well into a slowdown before you'll see it reflected in a jobs report. Again, because it's that lagging indicator, but regardless, okay regardless of how accurate or not so accurate the jobs report is, right? How did the Fed and the market respond to it, okay? Because where are interest rates headed from here? Because that's really where <laughs> the rubber meets the road, right? You wanna buy a house and you want lower interest rates. So how is this jobs report going to affect that? Well, Lucia Mudakani describes how the report poured cold water on market expectations that the central bank was close to pausing its tightening cycle. Now, Chief International Economist Daniel Vernaza said the labor market is still running too hot for the Fed's liking. He continued, anyone that thought the Fed might stop hiking as soon as March meeting is likely to be disappointed. So here we all are, right? We're watching from the sidelines, hoping the Fed will just leave interest rates alone, but it's not looking so good, okay? Immediately following the job data release, both bonds and interest rates both went up. Gina Smilek with the New York Times commented that the market responded by penciling in another rate move in May. She continued that stocks fell in response to the jobs data as Wall Street braced for a more aggressive central bank. Well, what did the Fed have to say? Well, Mary Daly said the number today on the jobs report was a wow number. The Fed communicated that they have more work to do before they'll be able to feel confident that inflation will fade fully. Rick Ryder with BlackRock, now he had some very sound advice, okay? He said the Fed would be well served to consider this as a success and think that slowing down the pace of hikes would allow the job market to bend but maybe not break, okay? So that sounded like really good news to me. 
novel concept, right? I mean, hey, Fed, how about if you slow down on the rate hikes and let's see if we can get inflation down without crippling the jobs market. Okay, let's take this thing local. Let's talk about the Dallas housing market and let's talk about the Dallas job market. Okay, so how's the Dallas job market compared to the national level? You know, this rosy picture with all these new jobs? Well, Mitchell Schnurman explains that Texas job growth has regularly surpassed the nation's usually by a healthy margin. But he continues that this year's edge turns out to not be as great as advertised after the numbers were revised and benchmarked by the Federal Reserve of Dallas. So yeah, you heard me right. Texas numbers were affected by the number shuffling as well. Schnurman explains that previous monthly jobs reports have shown employment growing, get this, over 50% in Texas than the U.S. overall, right? So that sounds awesome, right? But he continues, after revisions, including a major adjustment from a second quarter census, the gap between Texas and the nation was just 0.3 three percentage points. Luis Torres sums it up by saying, we're not as cool as we thought we were. Manufacturing in Dallas hasn't been doing much better, with negative territory reported for six consecutive months. Sherman explains that in November, 37% of manufacturers reported a decline in new orders. So, is Texas headed for a recession? Well, it depends on what happens to the national economy according to Torres, but we're definitely slowing down more than we thought. So here in Texas, where the economy typically runs stronger than the nation, things seem to be really slowing down. I mean, it kind of makes you question the accuracy of the jobs report even more, but it would also make sense with job numbers being a lagging factor, right? But I'm interested in knowing what you think. Definitely comment below. But. Here's the question, how is Dallas responding to this wild ride that interest rates are on? I mean, really, if you think about it in the span of one year, we've gone from 3% to 7% to in the high fives, but now back up to the sixes. Well, Dallas has a ton of pent up demand. So it is extraordinarily rate responsive, okay? So with just that nice little drop in the winter months from the sixes to the high fives, we saw more buyers entering the market. And keep in mind, this is in the winter months, right? When the market's usually pretty slow. Mitchell Martin comments that mortgage rates have declined just enough to have an impact on buyers' budgets. He continues saying, Dallas realtors have seen an influx of interested buyers make deals in January motivated by the changes in the market. And, and I can tell you, we at Home in Dallas, we've definitely seen increased activity as well. Several of you have contacted us just recently. We're talking anywhere from Hong Kong to New Jersey to Illinois, and we're excited. We love meeting you guys. We love hitting the ground running. Uh, speaking of which, if you have a move in the future, we'd love to work with you as well. Check out our Let's Find Home questionnaire, and we'll get the ball rolling. So anyway, there seems to be this general sense of the Dallas housing market picking back up. But that's, I mean, <laughs> that's not exactly quantitative, right? So how is it showing up in the real numbers? Well, okay, let's take a look at closed sales. December through January, historically, okay, has a massive difference in sales with many more people moving in December and a lot less moving in January. For example, from December to January of 2021, when interest rates were 2.65%, we still saw home sales drop 34% in one month. And historically, again, that's not unusual. Well, in December to January of 2022, when interest rates were 3.1%, oh, those glory days, <laughs> we saw home sales drop 30% in one month. So how does that compare to sales this year? Well, from December to January of 2023, with interest rates in the high fives to low sixes, we saw the number of home sales drop 30%. So essentially, the volume differential is the same as when rates were down at 3%. So I, I guess that's good news. It's going to be really interesting to see how the spring unfolds here in Dallas. Spring is typically very active and I think that's kind of been like the general expectation, but with rates going back up into the sixes, it's hard to see if that's gonna slow things down. We also have this pressing issue of underwater homeowners weighing in heavily as a risk factor for the Dallas housing market. A slowing jobs market is all it's gonna to take to put all of these homeowners at risk and just bring on a massive wave of foreclosures. I talk about that in this video, which you may want to check out next. In the meantime, Wendy out.